Hi, welcome and good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. I'm Audrey Joachim, dire uh, Director of Business Operation at Anna Innovation. We are here today for this live stream um, interview to, to, to present to you the UN, United Nations Climate Change Global Innovation Hub. It's an initiative launched at COP26. Um, the, you, the, the hub supports the Paris Agreement target with the aim of expanding the, the innovation space to respond to the current core human needs and this by enabling uh, transformative solutions. This initiative is launched by the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, who is uh, and their partner operates in six regional centers across the globe. Um, that goes from Bangkok, one in Bangkok that covers Asia and the Pacific, one in Dubai uh, that covers the Middle East, North Africa and South Asia, uh, one in Kampala, uh, Eastern and Southern Africa, one in Lome that takes care of the Western and Francophone Africa, one in Panama that uh, covers the Latin America region, and one in St. George that covers the, the Caribbean uh, region. It's a global and international initiative, and I'm happy to welcome today Masamba Choi, uh, Project Executive at the UNFCCC Global Innovation Hub at the UN uh, Climate Change Secretariat. Hi, Mr. Chui, how are you today? And thank you for, for joining us today. Oh, hi, Audrey. Uh, very pleased to be with you for this uh, interview. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to those that are following us. Thank you. So let's jump into the topic. So why uh, the UN Climate Change Global Innovation Hub? What is it? Uh, uh, what is what what's what is it? Can you explain uh, to us what this hub is about? So thank you for the question. So as you know, science is value natural, but innovation, which is the use of science to satisfy the human need, is not value natural. The reality is that innovation has been used mostly so far to serve power, uh, to serve military power and economic power. So one of the main reasons that we have decided to launch the Global Innovation Hub is to direct innovation more um, to support people and the planet. And then uh, the second aspect is the fact that the use of innovation to support climate and sustainability is not always effective. So we launched the Global Innovation Hub to enhance the effectiveness of the use of climate when it is supporting uh, sustainability, the, the leverage innovation when it is supporting climate and sustainability. So, Two main aspect, more innovation for people and planet. And second aspect, enhance effectiveness of innovation when it is supporting climate and sustainability. Uh, it's a very good point. Um, and and um, you are right to, mentioning, uh, to mention how uh, technology has not been used for climate change that much, I guess the, the, the focus and the, the, uh, the strategy of, of using technology maybe has not been also very um, highlighted to, to uh, uh, the global audience. Um, so um, I understand the purpose. Um, so can you uh, um, tell me more about how the hub is, um, what it will be um, and how it can support transformative climate um, and sustainability innovation? So the hub is first um, way of thinking. We are using, um, let's say, a systemic innovation approach um, to um, address innovation for 
climate and sustainability. And we are promoting moonshot way of thinking, um, meaning we would like um, those that are um, making objective target and commitment to be bold and ambitious. And then the gap between their ambitious target in terms of climate goal, sustainability goal, and what they are capable of doing, the gap between these two is precisely what we want innovation to feel. The situation currently is the fact that people are setting most of the time their goal and their target based on their perception of what is possible, not based on what is needed. And this lock, um, the lack of ambition and the lack of solution in a vicious circle. Because when those that are setting target, you ask them why you are not ambitious in your target, they will respond because I don't have the solution. And if you ask those that are developing the solution, why are you not developing transformative solution, they will respond because there is no demand. So the global innovation led by introducing a moonshot way of thinking where targets are set based on what is needed rather than what is perceived as possible contribute in breaking this vicious cycle. And then the seventh thing is that generally when people are innovating, they think innovation at the sectoral level. The problem with this type of innovation, they are needed. I'm not saying that we should not innovate at the sectoral level, but we should be mindful that this type of innovation can only lead to incremental changes. They cannot be transformative. Mm -hmm. If you really would like to have transformative type of innovation, you will need to go back to the core human needs. The product and services are satisfying and explore to what extent innovation can help the development of alternative value chain for the satisfaction of this core human need. Just to give an example, so to illustrate what I'm saying, if you ask a mayor of a city, how will you go about um, using innovation to enhance um, um, sustainability in your city, one of the first measures that will come in their mind is the replacement of a uh, combustion car with electric vehicle, which is good. This needs to be done. But what happened is that if you have that approach, um, yes, the, 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 the impact is positive, but what we are saying is before using innovation to um, support the shift from combustion car to electric vehicle, we need to ask the question, why car at the first place? Why do we car? Because moving from combustion car to electric vehicle is good, but having less car is even better. The question then is, can we use innovation to satisfy the need car is satisfying with less car. So for example, can we use innovation to design our city differently so that they are more compact, so that they are more complete, so that all the products and services are available at biking or walking distance, and we will need less car. So this is one of the um, mindset the global innovation hub is also promoting this transformative um, innovation that go back to the core human need. Here the core human need is access to product and services, how innovation can help satisfy this core human need um, in a transformative manner. And finally, when you are saying innovation, most of the time people focus on technology. Technology is very important when it comes to innovation, 
But to address the big challenges that we are facing, the challenge of sustainability and climate, technology only will not suffice. We need to have an integrated approach where innovative technology will be combined with innovative policy instrument, innovative financial instrument, innovative business model, and innovative product from the culture and creative industry, because this is about also changing behavior, as well as innovative way of working together, innovative cooperative approach. This is only all this, when we have all these different innovative instruments integrated in a cluster that we can have the right response. So to promote this um, mindset, we will have um, a digital platform, the Global Innovation Hub will be a digital platform. This is under development, it's not yet finalized, but some of the functionalities are already uh, available. And uh, this digital platform is uh, a database of demand for climate and sustainability solution. So for example, our partner, a city that would like to address a specific challenge, um, the challenge is translated into a demand for solution. And we have on our digital platform, uh, let's say a deep search engine that will go out there, look for solution, and then uh, provide um, the solution to entities that is at the demand side. So we'll have also process of um, systemic innovation where all these stakeholders will be brought together, the demand side and the supply side of, of innovation. Finally, it's um, the global innovation is also dialogue that are organized at each COP. So we have a pavilion and in this dialogue during 11 days, all the stakeholders of the Global Innovation Hub are brought together and they exchange on how best we can um, develop and um, deploy at scale innovative solutions that can support both climate and sustainability. Very interesting. I'd like to come back uh, to the, the, the core needs, the, the core human needs. Um, um, I understand that digital digital uh, platform will be the database and this type of library that provides um, the solutions. Mm -hmm. And how do you? What's the plan uh, about the hub? To how do you access to the core human needs? They might be different from different cities. You you you, um, you mentioned cities. So mm -hmm. between a city from uh, Manchester. Uh, mm -hmm. and a city uh, in, uh, um, in the island of Barbados. Um, mm -hmm. how, do they, um, can, how do they work uh, together? Mm -hmm. How do you assess core needs and, and translate that into uh, uh, the database? Yeah. So um, we will, the core, so first of all, we, will, we are targeting five key core human needs. The one is nutrition and health. Um, another one is uh, access, including mobility. The third one is shelter. And then we have leisure. And then we have closing. So these are the main core human needs that we consider as universal. And then we have two enabling needs that are very important, that are education and energy. So core human needs that are universal and two enabling um, needs that are energy and, and education. So this we consider it is universal. Now, the approach to satisfy this core human need can vary from an entity to another, from a city, for example, in the global north to a city in the global south. This is why it is very important to have a demand-driven approach. It should not be something developed top-down, but rather a demand that is coming bottom-up. And the demand should be what drive the development of innovative solution. What we are trying to avoid is a situation where you develop a solution and you look for use case. 
And most of the time, if you do that, your solution does not necessarily match with the reality of where you would like to use it. What we are promoting is rather to start from the demand side. What is the need the solution um, is meant to satisfy? And then from there, we, we, we do a backcasting and, and, and see what is the type of solution that is required or a combination of solutions that is required to satisfy that specific need. So this approach is critical if you want to have what we call a systemic innovation process. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so you talk about cities. Is there other stakeholders um, that are involved or you're looking for uh, to collaborate with? So you talked about cities. Can we uh, say to the audience uh, uh, who uh, is uh, um, um, who are the right uh, people to come back to and, and provide um, their needs as well? Yeah, no, cities are critical. And why cities are critical? Because cities are very close to their citizens. And we want to have innovation for the people, as I have mentioned, and the planet. And this is why um, cities is at the center. Cities are at the center. So, um, but you need to have those that are at the demand side. And what is really interesting with cities is the fact that they can be both at the demand and at the supply side, because cities can also be solution provider. So, um, and, and with cities, we need to have a broad range of stakeholders that are relevant to this systemic um, innovation process. So we need to have um, technology providers, technology companies that are at the supply side. We need to have um, a bunch of capital firm with their network of startup. We need to have um, the culture and creative industry, because as I have mentioned, it's also about changing behavior. So we know that uh, for example, there are many games, the gaming industry, they are very effective in influencing, particularly the youth. So we need to have them on board also so that they can help when it comes to changing um, behavior. We need to have universities and research centers. This is also something important because what we want to do is really to have innovation at the center and then to have uh, climate and sustainability innovation uh, full framework. So the demand for climate and sustainability solution coming from cities will be a pull factor for innovation. This is what will guide the type of innovation that need to take place. And then behind, we want to have a push factor. The push factor will be science breakthrough, scientific um, result that can support innovation in the development of new solutions. So the demand for climate and sustainability solutions from cities and countries pulling, and then the breakthrough scientific result pushing at the back. If these two are combined, we can have an acceleration of innovative solution for climate and sustainability in the coming 10 years, because we need to keep in mind that what we want is to be able to halve our emission by 2030, which is a very challenging objective, but possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's very needy because, um, I, and you write, um, that push you're talking about, it's really to change actually the way we actually do right now, which is we don't create, uh, and we don't, usually I think right now we tend to create a need. Um, so it's very interesting to come back to this systemic solution provider and, and putting the cities as a center of, um, of, of, of saying what is actually happening also in, in a city and in the core behavior of, of uh, the citizens. Mm -hmm. And so what, 
um, how uh, can the, the UN uh, Climate Change Group, uh, Global Innovation Hub support the upcoming global uh, stop uh, take? Do you, can you tell me more, can you tell us more about that? And that's a, that's a very important question because, as you know, the global stock take is taking place for the first time this year, and this is about taking stock. How are we compared to where we should have been? So science has defined what is the pathway of the global emission that is required to achieve the 1.5 degree goal. Now we need to do this global stock take to see how we are compared to that pathway that is determined by science. Are we doing well? Are we not doing well? What are the trends? Where are we going? Is it the right, the right direction? Are we going to the right um, um, speed? And so on and so on. So it's something really important. The outcome of the global stock take will be a gap. We know that we are not where we should have been. And we are also clear that we are not at the uh, right pace. We need to accelerate. So this gap will be the outcome of the global stock take. Now we need to be able to take that gap and translate it into a demand for climate and sustainability solution. What are the climate and sustainability solutions that are needed to fill the gap? And if we really would like to be successful, this demand for climate and sustainability solution in return should be translated into market opportunity for the private sector. So that those that are developing the solution find it attractive to develop the solution that will help fill the gap. But here again, this is the pull factor. So the outcome of the global stock take will be the pull factor. We will need the push factor coming from science. But for that, one important aspect is we need to have open science. For the time being, science is closed and is not accessible to everybody. So the scientific article, you cannot get them for free you have what we call a paywall that prevent the public to have access to the outcome of scientific researches for free. What we are promoting is free access to all the scientific articles. This is what happened with the COVID. During COVID, all the articles related to COVID was made publicly available for free. And this is what accelerated the development of research because everybody was aware of what the others were doing and this synergy helped accelerate. This is what will be needed also, open science to be able to accelerate the development of climate and sustainability solution between now and 2030. Mm -hmm. And um, um, so where islands fits into that global initiatives um, uh, in, in either in terms of, as you mentioned, access to technology and, and um, the, the, uh, the technical part of it. So we here at our innovation, our network and our audience um, um, lives in those small islands and would love to understand probably where do they fit in such a large initiative mm -hmm. and who should contribute at that stage right now? Well, islands have a very important role to play, both as supplier of solution, but also at the demand side of solution. So at the demand side of solution, the um, digital platform that we are developing, as I mentioned, will be a database for demand for climate and sustainability solution. We will be very appreciative to uh, be able to translate the needs of island into concrete demand for climate and sustainability solution that can guide the development of 
uh, the solution that are required. So what we need is to have, as I mentioned, this moonshot way of thinking, not making objective based on what is perceived as possible, but based on what is needed. And the gap, we take it as demand for climate and sustainability solution. And the global uh, innovation that will broadcast that demand. So our deep search engine will go out there in the web and see whether there are solutions that are already existing that we can pick and share with the island that are at the demand side. If there are no solution, then we will organize challenge and this um, uh, systemic innovation workshop where we will bring together technology provider, scientific from university, financial, and all together to brainstorm on how we can develop solutions that can respond to the demand. But as I mentioned, islands are also expected to be solution provider. There are many, let's say, uh, knowledge that can come from island local communities that are not necessarily uh, scientific knowledge. They can be other form of knowledge that can help better adapt, that can also address some aspect of, of uh, mitigation. I was providing this example of uh, using innovation to make our city more compact and more complete so that all the product and services that are, are available at biking and walking distance. In most of the countries from the global south, this is how our cities are, are built, and in particular in small island. You can almost have access to all form of product and services at walking and biking distance. You do not need to have a car to uh, address the issue of access. This is something that we can learn from the island. How do you, um, in an innovative manner, um, plan your city so that all the services and products are available? Mm -hmm. And that can be very interesting, especially for islands, because we islands usually face the lack of materials uh, we have and should import, and that can uh, be a very a good way to. Uh, to find easier solutions to innovate on the on the ground, yeah. I um, so can you tell us about the future plan and the strategy of uh, the global innovation hub on the road to COP twenty eight in two years since the the initi initiative has been launched and um, and and so you know to the COP to twenty eight but also beyond to the further support particularly uh, developing countries. Um, so what's the future? Yeah. So what we are doing is completely new. So we need to experiment. Mm. So how do we take uh, an entity, a city or a country, um, support the country in making bold commitment and then translating this bold commitment into gap and demand for climate and sustainability solution and addressing oh. this demand through the development of solution. This is something new. So we do not have already a well-established approach for that. So what we want to do between now is to experiment through called systemic innovation workshop. We, we plan to have one in June in, in Bonn, where we will invite cities then we will invite technology provider, finance, venture capital, and um, culture and creative industry. And we will brainstorm first on how do we transform a demand for climate and sustainability solution into a market opportunity for the private sector. This is the first thing that we need to address. And then how we can support uh, the upscale development of the solution. So between now and COP, we want to have two of such type of workshop and learn from this type of interaction. So, and we want to learn at three levels, what we call the 
that triple loop learning. So we will learn on specific cases how to uh, produce the solution. We will learn how to develop the process itself, what type of process we need to use to be able to translate demand for a solution into a solution. And finally, we will learn how the different organizations are changing and are reinventing themselves in this interaction that is very much needed. It's not a very good program. And I agree with you a lot and about the value of experience, experiencing, because that's how you also learn. And uh, uh, probably the core thing about innovation is experiment and readapt. Um, so it's a very challenging and, and a very ambitious um, uh, uh, initiative here. It sounds very wonderful. Um, so what is, um, how, can you explain also to the audience how you can, uh, you collaborate with organizations such as an innovation? What's the value you, you see in, into um, our um, organization? No, Island Innovation is uh, critical. These are the type of organization with which we need to collaborate. We are not, let's say, uh, an innovation hub um, to replace what is existing or another innovation. We are we want to build a network of network that establish bridge between different innovation hubs. So for example, we have innovation hub in different regions, but also you have innovation hub focusing on technology, innovation hub focusing on finance innovation hub that are only interested in innovative policies. And as I mentioned, the, 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 the most relevant solution will be an integrated solution where you will have policy, finance, technology, business model, all these things. So we need to have all these things connected and the global innovation hub would like to be a bridge. And it is very important for us, if we want to bridge to have at the local level, um, national innovation system. And, and, and island innovation is what this national innovation system that will allow us to uh, connect and interact with uh, countries all, all around the world. So we are expecting to be able to have demand from island innovation, demand for solution, and also solution and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yes, and thank you for, for um, highlighting this. It's very important for everyone to feel connected to those um, uh, initiatives because the knowledge also comes from the local. Um, yeah. And we invite everyone to, uh, to stay really connected and, and um, uh, um, connected to, to, to the, um, uh, the hub. We will uh, provide uh, uh, a few uh, after a few information, so stay connected also on our newsletter. Uh, Masamba, it was a very pleasure to have you today. Um, we are, and, and you mentioned, uh, we are all network. We would like to build a network of people who think the same, who understand uh, that we need, everyone has to feel included and engaged uh, for our planet Earth and for our societies. We need to be more connected to talk with each other and find collaborative solutions. That's why the hub exists. That's why Alanuation Alanuation exists. Um, so we're very happy to uh, uh, to have you today, Masamba, uh, to take the time to talk about this amazing initiative. Um, we will make sure everyone has all the links provided to know um, how to get involved as well. Uh, feel free to send me also an email, Audrey at aninnovation.co. Um, Masamba, you are on LinkedIn. Is there also a, another way we can connect to you? Uh, would you like all LinkedIn? Is that enough? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in LinkedIn and very happy to be connected. And I would like to say I was very pleased to have this interaction with you. And we are strongly, deeply looking forward to further enhance our collaboration. Thank you, Masamba. And I wish everyone a beautiful day afternoon or evening from wherever you are connected from. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.